wealth creation. We are handling the topic wealth creation. And we said wealth is a large amount of money. We said wealth is valuable material possession. We said wealth is goods and the services which carry monetary exchangeable or a productive value. We said wealth are the gifts and talents we carry. You are plenty. You are exuberant. You are a person of affluence. And then we said in wealth creation there are seven components I'm just doing a review of what we did yesterday. Faith in God. Somebody say, faith in God. Faith in God. Then we say the strategic relationships. Strategic relationships. Then we say the material possessions. Material possessions. Then we say money. Then we say experiences we carry in life you see my years of being a pastor a preacher an evangelist a leader in god's work when i see the to unpack and uh, download i'm giving a wealth of experiences something close to 40 years then we say the wealth is knowledge and the skill. Knowledge and the skill. A doctor has the skill in the area of helping human beings. A lawyer will stand in a court of law and defend somebody. Then even we say it also health is a component. What is the use of making money? And you are spending three weeks in the hospital and you are having oxygen mask. You are not enjoying yourself. Two, two categories of wealth creation. Hear me and hear me well. Before I go into the scriptures. Number one. There are spiritual vehicles. Spiritual vehicles. You may wish to repeat that out loud and clear. Uh huh. I'm not hearing you. Then there is what we call physical investment vehicles. Physical. And I will not go into the physical. I want to tackle spiritual investment vehicles. Are you interested in them? Children of God, are you interested in them? The problem is the understanding and the knowledge we have about money is very limited. We have never been trained. We have never been discipled. And especially those of us who come from the Christian world view where we are governed by this book called the Bible. You know, this is our operations manual in life. If you want to succeed as a believer, it is up to you to read the Bible and to apply the Bible. To read and apply the Bible. So you discover majorly when I'm talking, I am more inclined to speak from the Bible angle. And I know the Bible works. So I want to show you spiritual investment vehicles. Spiritual investment vehicles. Hear me, child of God, and hear me clearly. I'm so passionate. I wish everybody was here. Because this is where we lack. After we have given the tithe, what becomes of the 90? How do we use it? 
Do we ever make any strategic investments? Do we have any practical investments which will help us in our afternoon season? Afternoon season. Hallelujah. How do we behave as believers? Do we understand the rules, the principles, and the laws that govern money? Other people are using them for their advantage. They are making physical investments. They know what it means to own land and houses. They know the stock market. That's where their money is. They know intellectual ability in investment. Hallelujah. They understand how these things will work out. The story that appeared two days ago of the rich billionaires of Kenya from Moranga, a place called Rwadia. You go to Nairobi, they own Grogon. You go to Nairobi, they are the owners of River Road. And they did not own it yesterday. They started in the 40s and in the 50s. They went into the stock exchange in Nairobi. Their money has multiplied. That's why you are having Equity Bank, Family Bank, and other big enterprises. They are into Nairobi Stock Exchange. And they are doing very well. Christians, we pray more. We do very little in terms of investment. And I want to show you vehicles for spiritual investment. Number one, the first fruit. You need to write quickly, first fruit. Number two, tithes, tithing, tithing. Number three, offerings. We just don't give money. We give money with a mission. Money with a mission. Parental honor, number four. Honoring parents, physical parents, spiritual parents. That is a vehicle when you honor them. Because the scriptures are very clear. They say parents, children, honor your parents in the Lord. This is a commandment with a blessing so that you may live long. Number five, prophetic honor. How do you look at a, a man of God, an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher of the word? How much honor do you have when they minister to you spiritually? Then, number six, another vehicle is when you have a welfare, you consider the poor and the needy. Consider the poor and the needy. My friends, you gives to the poor, the Bible says you lend to the Lord. Anytime you have a program that touches the poor, the needy, the widows, the orphans and the widowers, you are giving it to God. If you are with me, say amen. I'm just opening your eyes. I'm showing you how you can create wealth through these avenues, these channels. Hallelujah. And your story will change. Number seven, missions. Giving for gospel missions. Outreaches. You are there. You are planting churches in some place in this country. You are supporting a radio station. You are supporting a television program. You are assisting in producing books. You are spreading the word. You are winning the loss. That is a vehicle for investment. Then the vows we make. Number eight. Vows and pledges. Again and again, you hear pastors saying, this year, our budget is this. This year, we want to do this and this. And many of us will stand up and sign papers 
Whether we understand or we do not understand, we damage our tomorrow by not honoring them. Because the Bible says, it is only a fool that will make a vow and never honor it. Because God will destroy the work of your hands. And the men of us here are victims. You need to wake up. You need to ask for mercy and forgiveness. Me, I'm doing the teaching. Me, I'm obeying what God told me to tell his people. If you are a fool of pledges and the vows that you have never honored, you closed your six-inch diameter that brings water to your life. You closed it. That's why you are struggling financially. You are looking for financial miracles. They may never come. Pay your vows. Number nine, seed of faith. Your faith is a seed. Huh? There are things you do in faith. And then Noah discovered this. He raised an altar. He gave sacrifices and offerings that were burnt. And the sweet smelling server went before the Lord. Actually, the word used there is a sweet, soothing aroma. There is something to do with offerings. Offerings we remove curses in our lives. The Lord had said, this land will never recover until Noah raised an altar. Raise an altar of worship. Raise an altar of service. Raise an altar of burnt offerings. If you are with me, you say amen. Raise them. There comes a time you must be a sower. There comes a time when you plant. There comes a time when you go out and harvest. After 12 years, you will get a Form 4 certificate. After four years, you'll get your university degree. Oh my God. Another three years, you will harvest your masters. Come on. So you can imagine consistently, coherently, persistently, you will come to a place, you will harvest what you have been doing to God and for God. Somebody say, Lord Jesus, make me a harvester. But you see, some of us have never planted. Some of us have never sown. We believe in harvesting. Then number 10, sacrificial seeds we give. Sacrificial seeds we give. Our pastor from Thika, Dr. Mbatia, had something he was doing in the church. He stood and he shared with the people. And I think the thing was over 6.5 million. And they just talked and they said, you know, God has told me we do this and we must do it. He left. A couple calls him later. And they tell him we have taken a loan. So that that project can be completed. Can somebody say amen? He was sharing with us this. A couple. They took loan. They paid for the project. Then they told him we will be paid by the church every month. So that we can be able to service what? Our loan. Do you know the church gave them money only twice? The third month they came up and they said stop. We can never negotiate with God. We did it for the Lord. I want to ask a simple question. How many of us are persuaded and convicted to take a loan in terms of millions because you are eternity conscious. You see, we value so much our cars, our televisions, our houses, whatever we have. We don't see eternity in perspective. And for sure, you can be sure God will never leave his people Without honoring his word. When you obey his word. 
he honors his covenant. When you honor his word, God is no man's debtor. So, Exodus 13 and 1. What is first fruit? The Lord spoke to Moses. Who spoke? I want you to answer me. Who spoke? He told Israel, sanctify to me all the firstborn. Whatever opened the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and the beast, it belongs to me. Hey. Exodus 13, 11. It shall be when the Lord God shall bring you to the land of the Canaanites, as he swear to you, to your father, he will give it to you. Thou shalt set apart to the Lord all that opened the womb. And every firstling that comes out of the beast, thou shalt, the males shall be to the Lord. And every firstling of an ass, thou shalt redeem with a lamp. That is, a donkey was never given. You paid money instead, and the, or you brought a lamp. And if you will not redeem it, then you shall break his neck. And all the firstborn among, among thy children shall be redeemed. It shall be when your son asks you in a time to come. What is this? That you shall say to him, by the strength of a hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of bondage. Because people will ask, why did you give three billion? Why did you build the church? Why did you support the television for seven months? It is because the Lord delivered you. It shall come to pass when a fellow could hardly let us go. The Lord slew all the firstborn in the land and so on and so on. The firstborn of the animals and whatever. And they were sacrificed to the Lord. Verse number 16 shall come to be for a token upon your hand. For the frontlets between your eyes and the strength of your hand. The Lord has brought you out of Egypt. How many of us are happy that we are saved? Huh? Are you thankful that you are not in a Shimolate was having life sentence? Are you happy that you are not in Naivasha Maximum? Are you happy that you are not in Kodiaga? Are you happy that you are not a part of the statistics in Kimumu? Where people are buried. Are you happy that you are not right now under oxygen mask? And uh, drugs are going through your body intravenously. That's why you need to thank God. Have you ever thought of thanking God when you got married? The first child literally belongs to the Lord. Bring them to the house of the Lord. You say these children must be dedicated to the Lord. Hallelujah. And after some time, you give a thanksgiving offering. Huh? Everything that opened, opened the womb. When we got married, I and my wife, we had to agree on the names we will give our children. We don't just give them names. We said the first one, if he's a boy, we'll call him David. King David, the psalmist, the singer. And do you know, David is a musician. He's the only student in Kavsabit Boys High School when he was doing Form 4, that registered to study and do music, and he made a straight A. The second one is Daniel, the prophet. Daniel is all over. As I'm talking to you right now, he has finished meetings in Cape Town, he has been in Durban. Right now, he's in Namibia. Prophesying. Our daughter, we call her Esther, the queen. Whatever she's doing, she's queening. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? And I will tell you again and again. I have given offerings on their behalf. Seeking the blessings of God. Because it's in the Bible. Anything fast. Romans. Okay, the reason why you are giving is because you remember your deliverance. Somebody say to remember my deliverance. Ebru di Atena. 
How many terrible things have come on your way and the Lord rescued you. You remember that accident? You remember that disease? You remember that your siblings are buried and you, you are alive. Even there are some of you here, your twin brother and your twin sister is not there. But you are alive. Lord, I will thank you. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, I will thank you. Romans eleven sixteen. For if the first fruit be holy, the lamp is holy. And if not, the holy, so are branches. When you dedicate your children, the first fruit becomes holy. You can read Leviticus 23, verse 9 to 12. I don't have time. Israel gave their harvests, their sacrifices of the lamb. And the lamb was one year without the defect. And it was burnt whole to the Lord. Proverbs 3 and 10. The Bible says, over to the Lord, your fast fruits. Kenyans. Brothers and sisters who are streamlining, watch me and watch me carefully. The first Sarali belongs to the Lord. The first harvest of the land you bought belongs to the Lord. The first income from your labor belongs to the Lord. The first increase, anytime you are given a salary increase, you bring it to the Lord. The first fruit of a child. You offer a special sacrifice. The first car. You offer an offering to the Lord. Hey, look at me. It's not 1,000 you give. If you bought the car 1.5, you are actually saying something different by giving 1,000. The first house which you enter, you give a thanksgiving sacrifice. The first income in your every year belongs to the Lord. Now it's up to you. You believe it? You don't believe it? The choice is, is yours. I can hear how quiet you are. When you first got employed, isn't it? You are with the language permanent and or you are on a contract which is renewable. And there are some of you that will handle money for 40 years before you retire or before you relocate. So do you know what you are doing by giving your first salary? You are protecting your salaries for 45 years. If you heard me, lift up your hand and say hallelujah. Huh? Huh? Did you hear what I said? When you give a special sacrifice of thanking God for that house you build costing 7.5 million, you are saying this house, thieves and criminals will not come. Huh? It is not one to have accidents of fire. Huh? This house are built. Nobody is going to come up and say you are built on a road reserve. We are going to tear it down. I hope you get what I have said. These are biblical principles. I don't believe in that, George. Fine. We are not here for debates. I'm not even here to get to the internet and begin to answer questions. I am very careful. Because I'm doing that which has been done, it has been tested, and the people have gone very far. Another investment vehicle is your tithing. Malachi 3, verse number 8. Will a man rob God, yet you have robbed me? But you say, wherein have we robbed you? In your tithes and offerings. You are a cast with a cast because you have robbed me. Even a holy nation. Verse number 10. Bring ye all the tithes. Everybody repeat it three times. All the tithes. Again. Again. To where? To the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now herein, says the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing. You will not be able to have enough room 
to receive it. Leviticus 27, 30. Leviticus 27, 30. It's important we establish this by showing from scriptures, literally, what the Lord intends his people to know. There are so many people out there, I don't believe in the tithe. It's an Old Testament issue. Ba, 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 ba. Are you aware that the tithe started before the law of Moses was written? 27, 30. Leviticus 27, 30. The Bible says clearly, And all the tithe of the land, whether it is seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's and is holy to the Lord. I want you to mark that word holy. Holy to who? Holy to who? Concerning the tithe of the herd or the flock, even whatsoever passeth under the road, the tenth will be holy to the Lord. He shall not search whether it is good or bad, neither change it. And if you change it at all, both it and the change thereof shall be holy, it shall not be redeemed. Number 34, these are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses, the children of Israel, in the mountain of Sinai. The tithe is a powerful spiritual weapon of investment. The tithe. The tithe. The tithe redeems your 90% which remains. Your 90% is secured by the tithe. And you relieve to see you coming to the end of the month. And still you discover there is a savings. Great blessings are unlocked through the tithing. If you don't believe in this, prepare to suffer huge consequences. And you will, these consequences will pursue you because of your ignorance in spiritual laws. Look at me. All the big hospitals in America are run by the Jewish people. The biggest universities in America, the founders are Jewish people. The New York Stonk Exchange is run by the Jewish people. They practice it weekly. Their money goes back to Israel. That's why you'll never defeat Israel. They are practicing the word. They are practicing the word. The biggest insurances around the world, huh? even petroleum companies, the Israeli people are behind it. You realize when we had a Jew behind the Safaricom, how it took the world by storm. The biggest American billionaires, odds, Huh? You know that porridge which we take. Huh? Behind it, that person was a tither. The big business companies in America selling food, sending, selling uh, engineering uh, products, behind it are the people who tithe Coca Cola. Hey. The caterpillar people, they tithe. Kenyan businessmen and the women don't believe in that. They show up in funerals. They show up in weddings. That's not a tithe. And if you are here, you are a businessman, you are a businesswoman, hear me. Look straight into my eyes. Be a tither. Protect and secure your business by in insurance called the tithe. If you run houses, you are built. Be a tither. Consistently, persistently, remain truthful. Don't cheat. You can cheat on income tax. You can teach, cheat on VAT, not with God. And again, I put a disclaimer. I'm not forcing you. The choice is, and every choice you make has consequences. 
It has what? Huh? If I choose to deposit the 50,000 every month to Nairobi Stock Exchange and I keep buying shares, you can be sure after some time I'll be among the worthier people. Huh? Because it's a choice I'm making. And there are consequences. If you keep going into shops and you are buying suits every week, and you are buying shoes, and you are changing cars every other three months, there are serious consequences. If you plow your 100 acres, you plant seed, take care of it. If it is maize, there are very serious consequences after nine months. Isn't it? If you report to work every day for 30 days, there are very serious consequences. It's a salary. So there are consequences when you withdraw and watch. Interested, but not involved. Write that statement. Many, many, many of us, as where we are, I'm interested, but not involved. Interested, but not involved. So you are in a church for 15 years, you wonder why? You have never been able to purchase a piece of land, 50 by 100. You wonder why you are still renting a house 20 years down the road since you got your first salary. Consequences. Consequences. If you are hearing me, lift up your hand and say, yes, sir. I'll not force you. You will never see me texting you. Why have you not, have you not paid your tithe? I leave God to handle you. Number three, offerings. is a vehicle. Spiritual vehicle for wealth creation. Oh, Bishop Gijana, what are you teaching? I'll show you in a short while. The book of Deuteronomy 16, 16. The Bible says, three times in a year shall all your men Appear before the Lord your God in a place he will choose. This is the secret of the wealth of Israel. All the men appeared before the Lord three times in a chosen place. They came during the feast of the unreverend bread, the feast of Pentecost called weeks, the feast of the tabernacles, which is called the ingathering, they shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Aye. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord, your God which has given you. Watch me. I see people attending these lunch hour meetings. You will never see them appreciate. Even say, let me be part of paying the rent or electricity. They are eating, they are eating, and uh, Pastor Nicholas Wafla from Uganda, he calls them spiritual caterpillars. They eat and they are swollen. You never come before the Lord empty-handed. Huh? You don't just come to church and say, Mama, unakitu, unisaidie nilipe. That kind of lifestyle, you are not a disciple of Jesus. You are an admirer. Huh? Come prepared. All of us, when we close our offices on Friday, we must begin to imagine what am I doing on Sunday. If you are bringing money, and it's big money, write a check. Huh? These days, you have a pay bill. You look at it, you send your money through there. A sister called me today and said, you know, Bishop, you prayed and I've struggled. The Lord has given me a job. I have sent money to the account using pay bill. And I said, daughter, the Lord bless you. It doesn't matter the amount as long as you are faithful. As long as you are, you're wondering. So and so got employed the other day. Now he's having three houses into rents. It's because there are certain things they are observing. Offerings. 
Israel went before the Lord three times in a year. The season of the unravened bread, that is before the, uh, the death of Christ, the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, and uh, the Tabernacles, which talks of the second coming. They did not come empty handed. Somebody say, empty handed. How many times have you come to a meeting and you walk out, you say, Hallelujah. I have been blessed. The Lord sees what you are doing. Let's read a very powerful scripture here in Proverbs 11.24. Me, I'm trying to remain as biblical as I can. There is that scattered and yet increased. There is he that withholded more than his meat. He tended to be poor. As you hold back your offerings, you are attracting poverty. But when you scatter, you increase. Somebody say, scatter and increase. Withhold, get poor. Uh -huh. Second Corinthians 9, verse 1 to 10. I, I will not go into that, but I just want to give a summary. The first fruit lays the foundation. Please write that down. When you give the first fruit, that's your foundation. That's where you will grow. When you are a tither, you open the heavens. Could you be walking under closed heavens because of your behavior? Then offerings will activate the harvest. That is the pin cord. That is the pin cord. First fruit, foundation. Tights, open heavens. Offerings, the pin cord to your harvest. Number four, parental honor. Kweshim was as. Oh, we are having a lot of people here that are uh, rebels. They abuse their parents. Somebody called me from very far today and said, Bishop, I have a problem. Not with my marriage, but where I was born. My brother has been fighting my father. And they exchanged. Then he wrote a letter. I am gone. You will never find me anywhere in Kenya. How? Can you fight your father? Who gave you the authority even to call them names? Huh? Do you know in that investment God tells us in Ephesians 6 and 1, children obey your parents in the Lord. This is right. That's the only thing you are allowed to do. Obey, obey, obey. Number two, honor your father and mother. It's the first commandment with a promise. So that it may be well with you. That you may live long on earth. When you honor your father and your mother. You will marry the right girl. You will get children at the time and the season. You will not be a struggler. You will not be to the hospitals in and out. Are you hearing me? Honor them. As a matter of fact, may I recommend it to you, send them help monthly, if not weekly. Huh? Build them a water tank. Sink a well. Build them a house. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let your father handle your money. Some of them, you'll hear them spitting on the money. And they're saying certain things. They will say it in Kikuyu. They will say it in Kikalenjin. They will say it in Rugoli. They will say it in Kikisi. And I've made a covenant with God. Anytime I'm going to meet my father. And his younger brother. There is a figure. I will never go lower. And I've noticed. Like now last week I was down there. I put money in my uncle. I found him eating. And he looked at that money. With the food in his mouth. This is what he said. Ever I say, yeah, I say, yeah, I know. 
where that man has come from, let it get back. Huh? And you'll hear statements like this. Oseboke, osarale. May you bring flowers, may you spread. That has to do is a vehicle for creating wealth. Your father, your mother. Osi kunte shat. Osi po chapa mama. Ida maneno mama atasema zaira na anguka. Ndugu yangu. Utatafuta kwenda binguni, utatafuta kwenda mashariki magaribi. You will never, never, never have a breakthrough. Somebody say, Lord, deliver me. Lord, deliver me. Honoring parents is a commandment. What does Hebrews 13, 7 say? Hebrews 13, 7. <laughs> it says, remember them which have rule over you, who have spoken to the word of God, whose faith you follow, considering their end and their conversation. We are told to give honor, tribute, custom to those who affect our lives. So into your physical and the spiritual parents. I want you to look at me. How many of you ever remember to appreciate the man of God or the men of God who minister to you? You know, one of the things David encountered when he was in the wilderness, the Bible says, and some people went away, they did not bring him gifts. Hmm? I gave out a video here. What pastors wish their members know? This one will make you weep. It's a Nigerian pastor by the name Olumide Emmanuel. But Emmanuel says things here that will shock you. Huh? Children who never went to school, they belong to pastors. People living in depleted houses, pastors. People wearing clothes and jackets which are oversized, pastors. People who repair their shoes, they go to the food, they remove the shoes, and they, they are given a new soul, pastors. People who will never enjoy life, pastors. And yet they are the ones who make two people stand together. They pronounce them husband and wife. Then they bless them to have children. And for sure the children come. Dr. Rocho will receive the children at the hospital as a medical doctor. Then those children are dedicated. They go to school. They become lawyers, engineers. Nobody remembers the past. I was having a, a farewell with a pastor somewhere in Kisi two weeks ago and asked the people, how long has this man preached? They said 59 years. So I asked them, how are you going to honor him? That is somebody says, anything people will bring. I said to my friends, people are going to bring pumpkin. They are going to bring sugar cane. People are going to bring avocados. You tell Africans to honor they will come with the 50 shillings squeezed. Squeezed. And that's honor. So 50 shillings, if you divide by 59, how much value is that per year? Less than a shilling. Look at me. I've been here for over 30 years. And the Lord and his angels are my witnesses. I have done more preaching here than anybody. So it's my honor. For 30 years, 100 shillings? Surely. <laughs> Is it 200? It's not even 500. Huh? So I told them, give me a figure. And they struggled. I said, okay. Do you think if you created 10,000 per year, it will work? Because I was shooting at 600,000. And you know, we hit 600 plus. It has never been done in that church. 
people were shocked when we were announcing the figure. Honor. 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 I know of places where people write checks to their pastor weekly. They call it pastor's gift. Huh? I know of places where they do yearly honor. I'm not talking about those people who are not the disciples. I'm not speaking to the admirers. Sisumusi mashabik. Ah, na maubiri. Nagufraisha. Alabu na muliza, mimi ni shabik. Anasema, yes. Sasa na muambia, that's wrong. Mimi si mtu anaye tumbuiza wake. Hmm. This morning, one minute after midnight, somebody calls me from Nairobi and he tells me, a heart-rending story. A student from certain university married. I woke up and I said, I'm going to talk to this person. I called for a while. The person didn't want to take the phone because of what they had said. Then I said, I'm so and so, I want to help you. We had a long chat. As I'm talking, that person has been connected to a pastor for spiritual recovery and restoration. Hmm? Tani ni muambia, you need emergency spiritual admission. Huh? And you need to be given start doses very high. Uweke wehewa, alaka sana. Hey! You need to be committed to blessing spiritual parents periodically, consistently. You need to honor them. You need to sow in their lives. You are not giving them because they don't have. You are fulfilling a principle. You put it in place, it will put you in position. Put it in place to put you in position. I'm closing. Could it be? Look at me. Could it be? You are a struggler because of how you relate to your physical and spiritual parents. Could you be struggling in your marriage, in your career, in your finances. Could it this be the cause? Are you struggling with the poor health? Where a lot of resources are going for medical tests. You are in and out. Admitted. In and out. The Bible says honor them. A person who teaches the word. And the preachers, the word should be honored double. Huh? You know, you can't bless me. Because you are not a, an elder. What you will do, you will honor me. But me, I will bless you. Because you are not allowed to lay hands on me. You. Huh? Hello. You may even be older spiritually. Age-wise, but the position and the rank God has put me. Hmm? It's just like uh, the lowest rank of an Ascari to go and put medals on a five-star general. They don't do that. They don't do that. It's only in the church. You know, say, Masasa bishini aje, nigote. Ni mekuchek. Kukolevo. Jesus, deliver me. May I honor those who are ahead of me. May I obey tithing, 
fast fruit, offerings, honoring of parents. Give me a breakthrough to create wealth in Jesus' name. I don't have holy water to spray on you. I don't have specialized oil. I don't have handkerchiefs which you will take and there are miracle handkerchiefs. There is no oil there which you will step in so that your feet becomes iron. Huh? I have not removed my t-shirt and cut it to small pieces because of the sweat. And you pay 10,000 per piece. You know there is also that uh, divination in the church today. Father, bless your children. Help your children. May we learn to discover the spiritual investment vehicles where we have failed. We seek your deliverance in Jesus' name. See you 5 o'clock.